so you're familiar with the Deborah Dalzell case. Uh, this transformed our community, transformed the family uh, of Deborah, and uh, this is a very significant day for us. So what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce the sheriff. We also have Captain John Walsh, who oversees our Investigations Bureau, and Peggy Thistle, the beloved sister of Deborah. Uh, we're very grateful that she has remained engaged with the sheriff's office over the past 19 years, so we're very happy that she's here. I also want to take an opportunity to extend uh, a thank you to the family members of Deborah, who across the country right now are tuning in live to uh, hear the story and, and find out what has developed in this case. Um, at the conclusion of today's press conference, we will not host individual interviews. All the sound that you will get will come right from the podium. Uh, thank you all again so much for being here, uh, and Sheriff Knight. Well done. Thanks, Caitlin. Sure. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, today is a good day. And uh, as Caitlin said, it's a, it's a significant day for the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. This community of Sarasota County, and most importantly, the family of Deborah Dalzell. The investigation that we're about to tell you about today is one of the no most noteworthy cases in our agency's history. It's an investigation that transformed this community, changed the lives of many people, and it's hard uh, to believe it took almost 20 years to get to this point that we are here today. As Caitlin said, today is with us is Peggy Thistle, uh, the sister of Deborah Dalzell, and investigations captain from the Sheriff's Office, John Walsh. There's several detectives here in the room, many retired, some are still working with us, that spent many years working on this case, um, dedicated years to this investigation. And I want to thank Peggy for being here today on behalf of her family and spending some time with us and, and the media, and to thank our Investigations Bureau of the Sheriff's Office, including those people who are retired that put so much time and energy into this and never stopped. People are familiar in the law enforcement community and in our media and our, our society with the term cold case. It often refers to an investigation that doesn't generate enough leads to stay active for an extended period of time. Cold cases, unfortunately, sometimes fall by the wayside. For the Sheriff's Office here, no case is ever deemed cold. We work every investigation as long as we can to get a resolution. In fact, in 2012, we brought in a group of retired law enforcement professionals to review unsolved crimes to see if anything was overlooked, to get a fresh set of eyes on cases, and potentially a new perspective of cases that we were continuing to work. The Deborah Dalzell homicide is one of the cases that re was reviewed in 2012. Today, more than 19 years after her death, the man responsible is behind bars. What led to his arrest is unlike anything you've heard in the state of Florida, but something that continues to surface as law enforcement agencies and technology evolve. The man you see here today, 39-year-old Luke Fleming, is charged with sexual battery and murder of Deborah Dalzell. His arrest didn't happen overnight and it wasn't easy tracking him down, but thanks to DNA evidence, coupled with ancestry and genealogy, we have finally connected the dots the detectives have been working on for almost two decades and brought him into custody on Sunday. Like I said, uh, Captain John Walsh from our Sheriff's Office is here, and I'm gonna ask Captain Walsh to come up and tell the story about this investigation, which began on March 29th, 1999. John, come on up. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, good morning to everybody that could make it here today. My name is John Walsh. It's spelled W-A-L-S-H, and I'm Sheriff Knight's captain in charge of the Investigations Bureau. Uh, this morning, we want to take time to explain an active and ongoing investigation, which has led detectives to the arrest of 39-year-old Luke Fleming for the murder and sexual battery of Deborah Dalzell in 1999. Uh, before I uh, explain that to you, I, I, I want to tell the public that the Investigations Bureau at the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office is like no other. I have worked with many other organizations, uh, detectives, and this is probably the finest in the state of Florida, if not the nation. The dedication of every detective, deputy, crime scene personnel, our chemists, fingerprint persons, and civilian support staff is extraordinary. I wish everyone could get to know each individual working here like Peggy has gotten to know and, and you would be absolutely amazed. The last thing I would like to say is thank you to the sheriff 
for your, your support and encouragement. We are a 21st century law enforcement agency because of you. Deborah Dalzell was an avid Red Sox fan who had recently moved from Mansfield, Massachusetts to Sarasota County in 1997. She had obtained employment as an office manager with a company called KMC Telecom. She has also been an attorney and an accountant. The last time anyone would speak to Deborah was her sister Peggy on Monday, March 28, 1999, around 4 p.m. In 1999, Deborah resided alone in a newly purchased home at 5356 Colony Meadows Lane in Sarasota, Florida. On Monday, March 29, 1999, Deborah was supposed to be at work by 8 a.m., however, she would never arrive. Her manager was concerned and drove to her house around 1045 in the morning to check on her. When he arrived, Deborah's house was locked, her car was still in the garage, a TV was on, and a screen to the pool area had been cut. Extremely concerned, the manager called the sheriff's office for help. Sheriff's deputies arrived around 1129 a.m. and entered the home through a rear window where they found Deborah obviously murdered. She was 40 years, 47 years old at the time. An investigation by detectives and crime scene personnel revealed some time between the hours of 4 p.m. on March 28th and 8 a.m. on March 29th, an unknown person or persons scaled a six-foot wall and cut the screen to the pool area to gain entry into the main house. After surreptitiously entering, Deborah was brutally battered, gagged with a sock, sexually battered, and strangled to death. Suspect DNA from semen found on Deborah's body was collected during the autopsy and submitted to the National Combined Index System, also known as CODIS. However, the CODIS system never identified a suspect in this case. Since this time, numerous detectives and crime scene personnel, both retired and current, have spent thousands of hours investigating this murder, contacted over 300 people, and collected nearly 100 DNA samples that were compared directly to the suspect DNA with the purpose and hope of identifying the person or persons responsible for this horrific murder would be identified. Over the past three years, significant advances in DNA technology have occurred. In 2015, detectives began to research the viability of phenotype DNA analysis and contacted a company called Parabon Nano Labs who could predict a person's physical appearance using a system they called snapshot DNA phenotyping. In 2016, Parabon Nano Labs conducted a phenotype analysis of the suspect DNA collected from Deborah's body and predicted the suspect was a male, fair-skinned, brown to hazel eyes with black or brown hair. They also provided composite images of what the suspect may have looked like. Detectives use this information to review past subjects interviewed by detectives, develop new leads, and interview other persons. In 2018, detectives employed Parabon Nano Labs again for the purpose of conducting an autosomal DNA analysis using the same suspect DNA profile. In this analysis, the suspect DNA was compared to a database of DNA profiles from volunteer participants in an effort to identify relatives of the suspect DNA and how closely they may be related. Genealogical information was provided, which detectives used to create a genealogical chart. After many weeks and hundreds of persons identified, the chart revealed a man by the name of Joseph Fleming, who was connected to the Southwest Florida area but died in 2001. However, further investigation revealed Joseph had two sons directly connected to the Sarasota, Florida area named Luke and Jesse Fleming. Detectives then confirmed Luke and Jesse lived at 5185 Magnolia Pond Drive, Sarasota, which was seven tenths of a mile from Deborah's home in 1999. Jesse Fleming is a convicted felon and his DNA is in the CODIS database, which eliminated him as the contributor of the suspect DNA. Luke Fleming was the only viable local living relative at this point who may have information about this case. Luke also possessed the same physical traits as predicted by Parabon Nano Labs. Through investigative means, detectives obtained a DNA sample which was analyzed and confirmed Luke Fleming was the contributor of the suspect DNA 
left on the body of Deborah in March 1999. After obtaining these results, along with photographic evidence, biological evidence, genetic profile evidence, genealogical evidence, and sworn recorded statements, detectives had probable cause to charge, to charge Luke Fleming with the murder and sexual battery of Deborah Dalzell. On September 16, 2018, detectives obtained an arrest warrant for murder and sexual battery with great bodily harm and arrested Luke Fleming in Manatee County, Florida. Detectives have learned so far that Luke Fleming moved to Sarasota, Florida from Brooklyn, New York in 1991 and had attended local public schools until he graduated from Riverview High School in 1997. We also know that he would have been 20 years old at the time of murdering Deborah and still resided in Sarasota, Florida at the time of her murder. He has an unremarkable criminal history, which includes a domestic battery arrest in 2002 by the Manatee County Sheriff's Office. Over the past year, Luke has been residing alone in Pinellas County and worked for a company called Bama Sea Products. I would continue to stress this is an active criminal investigation and we strongly encourage anyone with information to contact the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office Investigations Bureau at 941-861-4900. Use Sarasota County Crime Stoppers via email or the P3 Tips phone app or any of the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office's social media platforms. This is not the end of this investigation and we still need the public's help with information to answer the questions we still have. Uh, before I uh, give the podium to Deborah's sister, Peggy, uh, I wanna say on behalf of the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office, we thank you and the rest of the family uh, for their patience and support. No one can know what it feels like to lose a daughter, a sister, or a friend in this way. And personally, I've always admired the way that you've handled this uh, tragedy. I, I can't say that I would do the same. Again, on behalf of all of us, we thank you for your courage and support. Thank you. emotional day today. I speak to you today on behalf of my sister Deborah and our family, our mother, brothers, sister, nieces, nephews, and extended family. We come from a large tight-knit family. Sorry, I'm a bit of a puddle today. Sorry. We come, we come from a large tight-knit family. We are spread all over the country now. We have all waited over 19 years for this news. 19 years of graduations, weddings, new babies, and family milestones that Deborah has missed. We miss Deborah every day. We never gave up hope. Deborah was an extraordinary and special person with a loyalty and love for her family beyond measure. A smart woman, we like to brag that she actually passed the Massachusetts bar exam on her first try. She exemplified grace and kindness. She was an incredible role model to her nieces and nephews whose lives she moved and touched so much that I can see pieces of her in all of you. She would be overflowing with pride of the men and women they have become. Her move to Sarasota was a huge decision for a lifelong Massachusetts girl, but she fell in love with the beach, found the house of her dreams, and called it paradise. On March 29th, 1999, this evil person turned her paradise into a nightmare. As a family, we have dreamed of the day we would get the news that they had caught her killer. We now have a face and name for this monster. Together as a family, we will see this through to the end to make sure that justice will be served. I asked my mother 
if there was anything she would like to say, and she said yes. Please say, for 20 years, he has been able to see the sun, breathe the air, smell flowers. May today be the last day. And by the way, happy birthday, Deborah. Friday is her birthday. We love you. To the Sarasota Sheriff's Office. Sheriff Knight, Major Richard, Captain Walsh, Lieutenant Kasky, who I don't think is here today, Detective Lubrano, retired Sergeant Pingle, and the many employees who have worked on this case. We can never thank you enough. Your endless hours of investigation, the years of, ma of maintaining a relationship with the Dalzell family, your incredible passion and loyalty shown to Deborah in never giving up and keeping Deborah a priority. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. We are forever grateful. Thank you. I just want to thank a couple people. Then I know the media wants to ask some questions, um, specifically Peggy. Don't don't worry, we're Peggy. Um, thank you for your candor, and thank you for being here. I think it's important for us as an office before you ask questions of Peggy that we need to recognize some uh, people that helped us. The FBI, of course, helped us. Parabon Nano Labs, DNA Labs International and genetic genealogy consultants have all participated in the help to the detectives of the Sheriff's Office. And uh, for me, uh, the men and women here, thank you. This is what it's all about, is resolution. And uh, you guys have some questions of Peggy? She's here to answer a few questions. State your name and organization, if you will. No? Go ahead. Thank you. Here. John Rogers, she's Jim you had a chance to confront, what would you say? I'm um, be quite honest with you. Um, we're still processing this development, although we've dreamed about it. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I'm just not sure. Uh, Samantha Sonner, SNN. You know, you say that you had always dreamed of this. Uh, it's been 20 years. Had you started to give up hope that this day would ever come? Uh, there, there are always moments, um, but we have such a, a wonderful support system here within the sheriff's office, as well as a very large family that just kept us moving forward. Kimberly, you're with Fox 13. There's so many other cases, not just in Sarasota County, that could one day rely on this. What Absolutely. do you have to say to those families that may be going through the same thing? Absolutely. Great question. Great um, and that's basically how I how we continued to, to keep hope and my message would be persevere don't lose hope keep going just out ABC 7 Peggy did your sister or your family know the Fleming family no 